Well, hello, I'm Jordi Bailina. I'm from Iron3. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, identity and how zero knowledge can be used in identity. Uh, my presentation is going to have uh, three parts. First, I'm going to do a short introduction of uh, what we do in Iron3. Then I'm going to talk a little bit of uh, the roadmap of how, what we want to build, what are the main blocks that we see at least in this stage. Uh, of the development, and finally, I'm gonna finally I'm gonna do, give some ideas of how zero knowledge can be used in the identity context. Okay, so let's start uh, in Iron Three. What we want to build, we want to create a self-sovereign identity system. The idea is we are working with a very low layer uh, part. So. Uh, and well, we will. Def we are trying to define a, ki a kind of protocol, a kind of uh, system that's working. We want. To, we are doing that in an open source uh, manner. We want an open protocol, and we are trying to build a reference implementation uh, protocol. Uh, we are also building some of the some tools for you know for bringing all this zero knowledge technology because we saw we see this uh, technology absolutely key in the self sovereign identity field. And uh, of course, we want to focus in the in the standardization. But as somebody said before, uh, you know, we want to have good standards. So we first need to understand how uh, this technology works, how the system works. And I tell you that when we are working on this every day, we learn a lot of how of how many things and how important is this technology about. Uh, well, before starting with identity, I just want to say that we are developing some of uh, the Zika's, Zika's Narx uh, tools. I want to mention here briefly, first, Circom. Circom is a, is a DSL language uh, for writing circuits. Uh, well, it has some, some nice properties, like it's uh, parametric, par parametric templates. And uh, well, it works quite well for that, specifically designed it. Uh, we have Circumlib, which mainly is a set of uh, components or gadgets, if you want, uh, mm, for Circum. Here we have the from baby job EDSA. We have some uh, some hash functions. We also have all the uh, sparse Merkle tree uh, verifiers, inserts, deletes, and all that stuff implemented there. So it has been very good. It has been a good example of of uh, to prove that Circum is a good language for writing. Uh, for writing uh, uh, circuits. And then we have SNARK.js, which is an, an, an independent implementation of the LibSnark protocol. Uh, and today, we just launched it, something that's we just we launched it today. It's a, uh, well, it's a Zika, it's a Zika SNARK proof generator, but from the browser, write it in WebAssembly by hand. And well, it's quite fast. So right now, creating uh, proofs from the browser well, it's, uh, you can, just as numbers, more or less uh, a 5K constrained circuits takes less, less than 10 seconds in a, in a browser. But well, it just released it today, so if anybody wants to test it, that's good. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about identity. Very briefly, I think that here most of you have heard about self-sovereign identity, what it means. Uh, self-sovereign identity means that everybody should be able to create their own identity. The identity can be understood as a if you want as a, an, an address or a set of address to control that identity, okay? Uh, those identities, mainly what they do is they do claims. You can, an identity is giving claims mean that the, uh, it's like a, a state transitions. You start with some claims and you, you, you create more claims or you mean that you are creating a new, a new, state, a, a new uh, state for that, for that claims. And all that is because you want to prove those claims, a third party now, you know, university is making a claim about somebody is giving a title, and this person wants to go to a company and wants to prove that the university already makes a claim. Because there is this trustness relationship between the company and the university, you can prove all that stuff. And of course, this proof can be a normal proof, but can be also, it makes a lot of interest to be a zero knowledge, a zero knowledge proof. Okay, so how we do that, how we work, how, how, how we are um, generating that, how we are creating that from, from item three. Well, the idea is that uh, how do we create an identity? Uh, we could start with a normal key, and that's, that could represent an identity. But what we do is uh, we just put all the, all the data that defines an identity. We can say that as self-claims. For example, all the keys that, can controls, that controls that identity. You can say, for example, what's the, what's the notary or the blockchain or the smart contract where all the claims that you are doing is at that. Uh, maybe we can have some 
metadata, so you, it's a set of self-claims, okay? All those claims can be understood as a key value pairs, and we can put all those key value pairs in a Merkle tree, okay? And the root of this Merkle tree is the identifier of the, of the identity. That's where we start. If you want, it's the first, the genesis state of the claims, okay? So this is the initial identity. Of course, you don't need to do anything on chain or you don't need to do nothing. You just define that, create that, and this definition uni uh, uni univocally will give you this, uh, this, this hash, this root, that we, we understand that as a claim, okay? So when, when we are doing more claims, on time, what, we, what, we, what we're changing is mainly is we are changing this, this, this root. We are creating a new root because we're adding more, more claims. This, this model scales quite well. Imagine that we put this claim in a smart contract in a blockchain. This, for example, for a government works very good. They are having like uh, thousands or hundreds uh, or, of claims every day. So they can aggregate all the changes, all the new claims that this uh, government is doing, and maybe once per hour, once per, uh, per 10 minutes, is doing a transaction and putting this new route in the, in, the, in the blockchain. This is good, but this, if we want a system where everybody can be a, a certification authority, if you want a system where you can do 10, 20 claims, everybody should be that, this does not scale good. So the solution to that is maybe we can have, a, let's say, a, a, Let's start with a central party, if you want, at the beginning. That's a trusted person, trusted notary. And then what we do is the, the root, we send this root to, the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to this centralized uh, relayer. And this relayer makes a claim that I'm, uh, the user is this one. Here is good, but you know, the, here the problem is that this trusted, this relayer must be trusted, and this relayer can make, make me th say things that are not good, okay? So here, what we can do is that what happened if this trusted relayer is, uh, maybe it's a smart contract, and in order to publish that, you need, this relayer needs to uh, verify that the change comes from me. For example, my new route, I need to sign that route. And what I do is I send this route, and maybe this relayer aggregates many other transactions. They verify it with a zero knowledge proof, and then it's, very, it's just publishing the root of the roots, you know, the root of this trusted relayer. And you know for sure that uh, this new route follows the rules that, you know, that they need the signature of the new relayer, and so on. So that means that this is uh, what we call it a trustless. Uh, operator, and uh, this is very much, if you have heard about, for example, about uh, plasma snarks or things like that, it's, the idea is exactly the same. It's a kind of a scaling. It's, we are uh, verifying a lot of transactions with a single, with a single, with a single zero knowledge, okay? And with the uh, addition that here we don't have the data availability problem in that. Okay, but that's the, the, the idea of this, of this, of this uh, solution. Here, if you prove something, uh, you, you, you are sure that this proof is good. Uh, but if you, the, the only thing here is that maybe the operator just stopped working, but in this case, you will not be able to prove. You will not prove the opposite. So if you can generate the proof, you can be sure that the proof is valid. Okay? Of course, uh, this is a good application for zero knowledge. The other application is the obvious one. It's for just for proving uh, anonymously. A typical example of proving that you are 18 years old uh, without revealing who you are, things like that. This is a, a good application for that. An example of claims, just, this is just a single example. But you know, the system, a system of claims, you know, everything can be understood as a claim. And one thing is, for example, how we name identities. Well, a name identity, is, in this case, would be the owner of a domain name or the owner of a name. In this case, the owner of Iron Free could make a claim saying that uh, Jordi uh, at ironfree.io belongs to this identity. So you can understand even a full naming system as a, as a, you know, a sort of claims. The domain names have owners, the owners are identities, and the identities make claims on that owner. So we can, this is a good example, but you can extend that to everything that's a claim. 
Okay? And you can use the same systems just for making the proofs and all that stuff. Okay? So here is a little bit the roadmap that we are working on. Okay? Of course, in the lower layer, we have all the zero knowledge technology. That's not even clear what's going to be the, the, the one that's going to be the, that will work. Maybe there are going to be many. Okay? On top of that, of course, we have this, let's say, primitive, cryptographic primitive here. I want to say the importance of the of the hinge of the hash functions inside the in, inside the inside the snarks or inside the zero knowledge system. This is really important. On top of that, we have these uh, Merkle trees, sparse Merkle trees. We are working in a, a sparse Merkle tree. Sparse Merkle tree is, if you want, is our key values where the keys are put at some 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 place. They use to, uh, it, it, they put it in the same place, and uh, well. Uh, they work very good because you can prove inclusion and you can also prove exclusion of those as far as Merkle trees. Uh, they are big because they, they have many steps and this is not very good for, for, for a snarks. But you can do some tricks because uh, the definition can be with, a, 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 I don't know, maybe with 200 levels. But uh, you can have different circuits, maybe one with 10 levels, another with 20, another with 30. All of them are valid for the for this uh, structure because the structure does not change, but you can have different circuits for validating different levels. So this has this advantage uh, on that. Okay, and when we have this Merkle tree, then of course there is all the claim format. If you want the generic claim formats, and then all the specific claim formats, and then of course we need to standardize also what are the circuits for verifying those claims. There are some of those that are obvious. Maybe, for example, that uh, somebody holds, uh, some, some, somebody makes a claim that's uh, an obvious. Maybe this one that we talk about, the edge, with some range, range checking on that. That could be another example. But you can have more circuits on that, and, and that's another another place, uh, an important place. Okay, and uh, more in the higher level in the identity, and this is very much how we see the system to work. Is the we are we, we think very much. An identity is very related to form filling. Okay, when you are form filling, in general, you 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 have some fields, in general text fields or image fields if you want, or you know multiple choice or whatever inf that information. But there are two fields, two kind of fields that are like for us very important. One is the signature. Uh, I think in the normal real paper you see it easily that there is always a, a field where you can add a signature. So I think it would be good to have a, uh, you know, a standard for defining a field where you can uh, put a signature. And the other is a proof. Maybe you, are, you have a form, so it means that you are asking for a proof. And then you are filling with a proof that, that proof what the form is asking, you to, is asking you to prove. So this is. You can generalize that very much, but uh, if you think an identity, you will see that that very much it, uh, it works. Uh, uh, you always can think in this: uh, I send you a form, you fill the form, I receive the form. And if you think in that way, this works very good for the standardization, you know, for for for, 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 generaliz for, for generalizing the communication between that. When we are talking about uh, communication between identities here, and I want to, I will jump. Here we have a identity discovery protocol. This is not that zero knowledge related, but we need to find a way. Right now we have DNS, but DNS is quite centralized. But we have, need to find a way, a decentralized way, to find for an identity. When I want to know something about an identity, I need to have a way, a decentralized way, to find for an identity. So here we have an identity discovery protocol or something like that. It should be a peer-to-peer -peer protocol for that. And once we discover an identity, mainly what we are asking for is uh, if you want service related identity maybe an email i want to know what, what how can i send you an email or uh, how can i send you a message or maybe what's your linkedin or what's your curriculum page or you can define here as many identity services uh, or, uh, on top of that okay so this is full picture you know a summarized picture of the work that the of the vision of the work that we are doing and just to finish the presentation, I just want to uh, just sh mention some use cases, some random use cases of the zero knowledge applied to identity. One, of course, is uh, uh, oh, one, one is anonymous voting. It's not in the presentation, but of course, it's an important, an important one. Another is anonymous login. Uh, it would be cool, for example, to log into a 
I don't know, to a web page of this Congress. Um, mm, but without revealing who you are, the only condition that you should need is that, for example, that you have buy a ticket on that. That could be, for example, a good example of anonymous login. Of course, you have a reputation proof. Sometimes you have a score or you have a, some kind of reputation, but you don't want to reveal the, you don't want to reveal the, <coughs> where the reputation comes from. So the claims that gives you that reputation. Of course, here it is a, a, an important thing that you can do on, on identities. Another is, uh, this is, this is a little tricky, but this is interesting. Uh, I can, this, we call it cross identity, uh, cross identity proofs. So here the idea is that I can have uh, two identities. One maybe is my real identity and the other is my fake identity. And I don't want them to be related one to the other. But I can, it's possible, so here maybe there is some service that, okay, you don't need to, you don't need you can use a fake identity, but you need to prove that at least you have one real identity. So here, without linking, without knowing which is your real identity, you, can, you, you know that you have a fake identity, uh, you, that this fake identity has a real identity. And only one, and here is the concept of the nullifier and things like that, so that you, you can only create one specific fake identity that is not related, you can, nobody can relate it, but, uh, uh, but you can only create one. So this solves a lot of, for example, for civil attack protocols. That this is one of the, a lot of, this is one of the things that, uh, one, of the, one of the excuses to ask for uh, identity in a lot of the, in lots of the applications. And the last thing that I want to mention is uh, just a nice trick that's used in a lot in these uh, non-reusable proofs. I don't know if you heard about, but this is a cool idea. The idea is that when you are giving a proof, uh, imagine that I want to prove that uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm from a specific religion or I'm from a specific political party. And I want to prove some, a specific person about that, that the church is saying that I'm from that religion. But what I don't want is that this person just take that proof and publish to everybody. So everybody knows that I'm from that specific religion. Of course, the information, I already tell them the information. But it's not the same, so if, if, if this proof is not the same that he says something, that he proves something. So how the system works here? Here, instead of proving to somebody else that I'm from a specific religion, what I'm saying is I'm proving that I'm from that specific religion or I hold your, your, your private key, which is obvious that I don't hold your private key. So because I don't hold your private key, it's sure that I'm from that religion. But what happened when you just take this uh, proof and you just publish to everybody? You are, publi you are proving to everybody that you are, that I am from that religion or that, I, uh, that I'm holding the private key, which is obvious that the, that the person holds the private key. So you are not proving anything. And one thing to guarantee that is, for example, taking the proof and encrypting it with a public key of the person that you want to send it to. It. The, the simple fact of uh, opening, of uh, uh, the decrypting this proof automatically makes this proof unusable. So that's a, I think it's a very cool thing. Here I want to give some credits to Vitalik on that, but that's, that's a, a cool idea. And that's very much uh, my presentation just to take away. Uh, so some summary, just uh, we are building this uh, sovereign identity. We are the, creating this open source. We are, you know, we are, we are a, a non-profit profit, uh, a non -profit uh, association. We are building all these uh, zero knowledge and trying to, grief, to, to bring this zero knowledge technology to mainstream. And of, of course, we, are, we want to push on those, on those standards. And that's it. Thank you very much. Great. Any uh, questions? Turn this on. Any, any questions? Yeah, please. Hi, this is Hitarshi. So uh, as far as claims is concerned, are you using uh, uh, any of the standards like W3 standards for the standard claim definition or DIDs? Is that part of your uh, implementation? It could be used for, but uh, the main difficulty of, the, of this kind of uh, uh, standards is that they are very much JSON based and, you know, uh, the, you know, uh, decoding as JSON inside a snark is not something very useful on that. 
And here we are talking about uh, data definition, a lot of uh, data definition that should be zero knowledge aware. And uh, as far as I read, uh, this kind of standards is not very much prepared. Of course, you can define a DID uh, that uh, can, that goes in that direction. We, we are planning to do that. Uh, you can maybe use some parts of the protocols for that, but we, we are here we are talking and defining uh, self sovereign data structures, uh, circuits, and uh, structure, uh, that's different. That's another story that they are wielding. Okay. okay because but they can be linked a lot. Right, for sure. right. because uh, I worked with uh, Hyperledger Indy, and, and it uses those standards. So maybe you know if we have those standards uh, adopted, then there is an interoperability that is possible between identity systems. Yeah, yeah. so they, they have some sort of compatibility, so sure. we have to work on. But you know, or, 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 or work is more in this uh, uh, low level, Zero sure. knowledge. Be before going to the standard, you need to make it work, and we need to prove it. Okay. Somebody said that before, and I like it a lot. Right. Thanks. Great. Okay. So it looks like we're done with the session. So thank you very much again. Let's thank the speaker one more time.